Hi, my name is Cassandra Shaw, and I'm a programmer at Google that helps other groups within Google use TensorFlow. In this section, we're going to talk about reducing loss. Previously, we learned how to compute the loss, but how do we choose the set of model parameters that minimizes it? Well, what would be nice is if we had um, a direction to go in within parameter space, some sort of guide such that each set of new hyperparameters that we took on had a lower loss than the one before it. One way to get a direction is to compute the gradient, the derivative of the loss function with respect to the model parameters. For simple loss functions like the squared loss, the derivative is easy to compute, and it gives us an efficient way to update model parameters. Think of it as an iterated approach. Data comes in, we compute the gradient of the loss function on that data, the negative gradient tells us in which direction to update model parameters in order to reduce loss. We take a step in that direction, get a new version of the model, and now we can recompute the gradient and repeat. Pretend in one dimension, this is our loss function that maps our single model parameter theta to the loss. If we start off at a random value or initialization for theta, then we achieve the corresponding loss. We can then compute the negative gradient, which tells us in which direction we should go in order to minimize the loss. If we take a gradient step in that direction, we get a new loss. We can keep taking gradient steps in that direction until we reach a point in which we have passed the local minimum in which the negative gradient will tell us to go back in the direction that we came from. How large of a step should we take in the direction of the negative gradient? Well, that is dictated by the learning rate, a hyperparameter that you can twiddle. If the learning rate is really small, then we'll take a bunch of teeny tiny gradient steps requiring a lot of computation in order to reach the minimum. However, if the learning rate is very large, then we will take a large step in the direction of negative gradient, potentially overshooting the local minimum and even reaching a point in which the loss is even bigger than before. In more dimensions, this would cause your model to diverge, in which case you should try decreasing the learning rate by an order of magnitude or so. We just described an algorithm called gradient descent. We start somewhere and we continuously take steps that hopefully get us closer and closer to some minimum. However, does it matter where we start? Well, let's think for a minute. If we put ourselves back in calculus class, we learned that um, some problems are convex, meaning that they're shaped like a giant bowl. So as long as we start somewhere on the bowl and we take reasonable step sizes and follow the gradients, eventually we'll find our way to the bottom of the bowl. However, many machine learning problems are not convex. Neural networks are notoriously not convex, meaning that rather than being shaped like a bowl, they're shaped more like an egg crate where there are many possible minimum values, some of which are better than others. So their initialization does matter. More on that later. Let's think for a moment about efficiency. When we're computing the gradient of the loss function, math suggests that we should compute the gradient over all examples in our data set. This is the only way to guarantee that our gradient steps are in exactly the right direction. For large data sets with a million or billion examples, that would be a lot of computation in order to perform each step. Empirically, people have found that rather than using the entire data set, if they compute the gradient of the loss function over a single example, that mostly works too. Even though they'd have to take more overall steps, the amount of total computation in order to reach a good solution is often much smaller. This is called stochastic gradient descent. In practice, we adopt an intermediate solution. Rather than use one example or the entire data set, we use a small batch, somewhere between 10 and 1,000 examples, to perform our steps. This is called mini-batch gradient descent. 